This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. New faces are set to make their debut on the world stage and former champions are ready for another run and it's anybody's game. In a year already full of upsets and surprises, oh. it's time for the next chapter of VCT. Hello! And welcome to day one of Masters Madrid. We're coming to you live from the Madrid Arena for the first global event of the year. I am your host, Ying Su, and I'm delighted to be joined on the desk uh, by Mimi and Kukuka. ¿Qué pasa? We're in Spain, finally! Bienvenidos a España. Eh, yo creo que podemos hacer todo el programa en español y si no os enteráis de nada, pues simplemente os echamos. I, I agree with everything she just vale, said. Vale, 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 vale. Spain's great thus far. This, this <laughs> city is beautiful. Okay. I think the crowd is going to be amazing. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. But so we are changing the game in 2024 and Masters Madrid will have a standard, will not have even a standard double limb bracket. Check out this quick format explainer brought to you by the one and only Mixwell. Get ready. From March 14th to March 24th, the best Valorant players in the world will converge for Masters Madrid. The first global event of the 2024 Valorant Champions Tour will feature eight teams representing the four international leagues. Teams earn qualification for Masters by finishing top two at their respective kickoff tournaments. Masters will be split into two parts, the playoff bracket and the all-new Swiss stage. First up, we have the Swiss stage, which will narrow the competition from eight teams to the top four. To advance out of Swiss, teams will need to secure two wins before they accumulate two losses. Each match will be a best of three series. Before the tournament, participants will be drawn into four matches. In the first round, we'll see teams who won their kickoff events face off against all the second place team finishers. No same region matchups allowed here. Those who win round one will move up, and those who lose will find themselves in elimination matches. Between each round, two fully random draws will decide who plays who, and from here on out, regional fratricide is fair game. After three rounds of Swiss competition, we'll have our four playoff bracket contenders. A random draw will pair the competitors, a double elimination bracket will narrow them down, and will close out with a best of five series in the lower and grand finals. The last team standing will be the Masters Madrid champion. Mark your calendars, tune into the action and catch the grand finals on March 24th for an exclusive preview of Valorant's next agent, followed by a show match to see them in action for the first time. For more information and updates, visit ValorantEsports.com and follow us on social media. Get ready for the ultimate clash of Valorant at Masters Madrid. Oh, Mixwell, I am so ready. There's a lot to unpack there, but let's talk about the new Swiss format. Uh, yeah. Because, Mimi, we have never seen this at a global event before. Yeah, it's very similar to the old GSL format, where it's you have to win two before you lose two. But what's interesting is the opponent you play is randomized. So it makes yes. it a lot harder for the teams to prep for their future matches. Yeah, exactly. But I think this is the kind of competition that we wanted to see. We get the seat ones versus the seat two. And, of course, we're very surprised that some of the usual suspects are not here in Madrid. So I think that this tournament is going to be definitely one that nobody wants to to miss. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy the amount of teams you would expect to be here that aren't. EG, the champion from last year. Fnatic, the team who won every other event yeah. last year. You have you know. DRX, you have NRG. <laughs> All the mainstays of Global, yeah. for the most part, aren't here. This is really the year of, of young blood, of new teams stepping up to the Global stage. Yeah, all I'm going to say is it's, it's chance for Paper Rex. Paper Rex, uh, they haven't had a trophy yeah, they're one yet. they're the few who made it. Yeah, with everyone else being uh, not yeah. being here, this is their chance for sure. Uh, we're, of course, also playing on patch 8.0. 
0.04. It doesn't really have uh, any major age imbalancing or major tweaks. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like we've already seen enough weird things that's been happening at kickoff. <laughs> so I assume we will still see those weird things. Here, we've got a new format, of course, and the field is wide open. We want to know how you think this is going to play out in today's MasterCard fan poll. Which league do you think will bring home a trophy? Will it be America's China EMEA or Pacific? Scan the QR code on your screen to cast your vote. And we'll have the results in just a bit. And if you want your post on the broadcast, make sure to use the hashtags Valorant Masters and VCT. I'm just going to let you guys have it real quick. Which league is bringing home the first trophy of the EMEA? EMEA. But it's going to be a close EMEA final against and nothing America's. Else. This EMEA is, and nothing else. Bea, this is EMEA the closest. and nothing There's else. No I know favorite. anything can happen, okay? But they're the There's one being no the very big, biggest surprises. So it's only no fair. Favorite. I will say Pacific or China just to oh, be different. Except yeah. for that. That's just not to, <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll throw my two cents in there. Uh, while we wait to hear what you guys think at home, let's hear from our resident to know it all. It is Bren and SciShow. They're here with some Swissology. Never been wrong. Welcome to Swissology. I'm joined here by the Prophet Bren, and we're going to lay out for you how the Swiss system works and our predictions for what's going to happen. Part of it's random, so we're definitely getting this wrong. <laughs> These are the opening matches. Bren, I want to start off by getting your expertise. Who wins Carmen Core versus FBX? Carmen Core. Okay. It's uh -huh. all blue. All right. It's okay. all blue. We'll, we'll turn the teams that are losing upside down. Yep. That's never gone wrong for us before. No disrespect intended. Not at all. No. Gen G versus Loud. Who have you got winning that game? Oh, Gen G apparently have been. Dominating their scrims. Owning. Yeah, haven't lost a single Owning. single scrim. Um, I'll go Genji. Okay. I mean, EDG sorry, Paper fans. X. EDG Paper X, I'll go VDG. I mean, okay. EDG, oh. I think EDG have shown higher peaks, but listen, I'm as controversial. All right, and Sentinels against Heretics? Uh, again, I think, I mean, Heretics could win, but I think it's going to be Sen. Right, okay, so that sets us up for all of the teams on the left winning. Okay. So let's get them into one and zero. So they would be in round two. Yeah, okay, all right, so Carmen, Carmen Core. Core. Yeah. Boom. Who are they playing Put against? Put that there for now. Who are they playing against? Uh, give me another Just keep team. throwing. Gen G, keep Just throwing. keep throwing. Okay. Okay, right. They, they might we'll be Carmen Core up here. Okay, and then give me Gen another G there. Team. EDG. EDG, Sentinels. Another winning team. Okay, Where EDG playing against Gen, Gen G. G. Okay. So that means Sentinels playing Sen against Carmen Core to open. Who wins? Send Carmen Core. Send Carmen Core. That's such a hard one. I mean, dream matchup for me as well. Um, Pick. It's Sentinels. Sentinels win. Carmen sure. Core upside Sorry. down. Gen G. EDG. Uh, Gen G. Gen G win. EDG upside down. The 0 <laughs> oh 1 God. teams. Get them. Get them. Oh, whoa. Loud. Whoa. Paper X. Paper X. Pa I've, I've picked up Heretics instead. Well, they yeah, okay, there. that's fine. That's also fine. Paper X. Paper X. Uh, they, they go down there. And who FBX. 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 Who wins? FBX Heretics. Uh, Heretics. Okay. Sorry, FBX. Who wins? Loud. Uh, Paper X. Loud. Okay. And who who goes through? These are one on ones. All right, these are the one on one teams. That means that Heretics. Loud. They Heretics. Go through. Loud. Heretics. Okay. Loud. <laughs> Ten up here. seconds. To, uh, heretics? Against Heretics. Again, uh, what? Kamen Core, EDG. Kamen Core, EDG. The Kamen Core's already there, Kamen Core's already there. Come on, EDG. Who wins? Who wins? Kamen Core. We're out of time, man. We're out of time. <laughs> Who wins the whole tournament? Mm. Pick. Mm, I want to think about it, actually. Unbelievable. This guy is not the Lisan Al Gaib. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Yinsu, back to you. Uh, if he's not the least on Ogai, we gotta find one. We I gotta, like find, we gotta one. find one. Swissology is my new religion. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's what it is. You're the still girl? You're the still girl of this set? You're gas in the mouth? My religion is yeah. chronology. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they've never been wrong, right? They've, they've never been wrong. So, for, yeah. well, but I mean, how right Tokyo do you think? I, I think that everybody at home guessed how we made the brackets and we finally shown that it's just Breng smashing. That is actually what yeah, the admin exactly. does in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually Breng. Yeah, he's the script writer. No, but not, not many people he's know about He's the script writer, he's the him. admin. It's, it's just him. Yeah, well, let's see if they're going to be right about this first matchup of today because Carmichael Core will be taking on FPX. Uh, they did face each other at lock-in, but so much has changed since then. And Mimi, who? Who would have thought that this team will be the one to come into this tournament as EMEA's number one seed? It's unreal. Last time these teams played, it was like the silly match, right? It was like, oh, no one, no one's looking forward to FBX oh, Carmen Core. They are changing. Yeah, now we're going back, and Carmen Core have completely reinvented themselves, rebuilt the team around Shin, and completely reinvented their style. And they dominate in EMEA. They played more matches than all the other teams yep. in playoff. They beat Fnatic. They beat Foot. They beat pretty much every top. <laughs> team in EMEA, except Na'Vi. They just look unbeatable right now. And I think it's important to also say that Shin, it's not even that it was built around him. He 
also had to go through that trial yes. process. He also had to be selected. And every single one of these players has a very um, specific mission in the team. And the way that they're playing, like fundamentally, is just beautiful to watch. And they are one of the reasons that EMEA on itself, it's changing and how uh, everything is going to be different. And probably th the reasons why we do not see the usual suspects here. It's also a very different way to build a team. We yes. saw, I think, last year when we started our international leagues, a lot of teams building super teams, focusing on getting the best players who have proven themselves. That wasn't K-Core. They picked up tier two players. Magnum hasn't played in tier one in ages. Neri was on the worst NA team in challengers, and now he's dominating the EMEA. It's all fresh talent on this squad, but they have made a monolith. Yeah, and I have to uh, mention the man that ties all this together. <sighs> Any opportunity to, uh, to talk about Gambit, yes. I will take it because N is back and Kukuka, it is the same formula that saw him succeed the last time he was here. Exactly. I don't know if you've been living under a rock, but Eng did it again. In Gambi, he picked up three duelists, gave them different roles and created a super team. The same way that we were hearing Brent talking about how Genji doesn't, didn't lose his cream since they got to Madrid. Gambit was that team every single event. They couldn't perform in the international stage, but then it screams uh, they were winning everything. And it's that formula, that hard work, that actually finding and studying the player, learning what is best for them and how you can get the best out of them, especially picking up so young because it's so easy to, so, sorry, so difficult to unlearn things that if you get these young guns that can shoot and are definitely willing to, to learn, you put Aang there, it's literally a win. Exactly, right? This team wouldn't be the team they are today without strong leadership to develop it. You still have Zaish mm. who was with them last year coaching, but now he's built up with Coach Aang and all these players. I mean, every time you hear them in an interview, they're talking about how impactful the coaching staff is at building them up, at making them the best players they can be, and also bringing up what I think is the forefront meta-leading compositions out of yes. any other team here. I mean, that's just what N does, right? Like you said, in every interview, it's even crazy the, he e wasn't on a team last year, Even by the, the ex-Gambit players, you, you have an interview, Red Guard with Shados Chronicle, they still talk about N and what he told them uh, as well. And I'm glad you mentioned the scrims, Bayer, because yeah. Zaysh uh, tweeted out shortly after they won, became the number one seed of EMEA. Just basically uh, re rehashing what happened with Gambit, just yep. the fact that they played an obscene amount of scrims and they won them all. Yeah, exactly. I think it was either Chronicle or Red Guard, I cannot remember, but uh, three years ago we saw them being like, oh, we played like over 700 scrims this year, something crazy. And it looks like this is part of the Ang method. This is one of the things that he does. And I think that it translates very well onto, um, uh, onto the officials because the fact that they don't lose a scrim is that they only focus on improving their fundamentals and not focusing so much on the set plays because they, it all comes together if you have that base. Yeah, it absolutely does. And I think we see that in in the amount of practice, how well put together the initial ideas are, right? They're playing stuff no one else is, and the implementation of it is really good. But it's not just that, it's the synergy between this team. You watch them play, and you see in every situation, even when they're up, how intentional they are at setting up double swings, at putting each other in positions to make rounds that a lot of teams could let slip away, unlosable. They are so methodical in their approach. Honestly, my favorite thing about this whole narrative is they're just good. True. They're just really good. good. Like, what else yeah. can we say? Uh, and speaking of that, uh, Kukuk and I had the yeah. privilege of watching Naray on LAN in EMEA, yes. uh, doing everything that he does, having the best performance there. Is this what you expected when you heard that he was coming over Dude, to the he was, he was on, <laughs> okay, okay, just for context, he was on Mad Lions last year, a team that hey, was one of the have bottom. Mad Lions? <laughs> nothing against uh, the org. We're in Spain, can't say any of that. But <laughs> one of the that. bottom <laughs> three teams in Challengers North America. And then he comes yeah. to Europe. There's a, a risk taken on him by the coaching staff of this cake. 14, and he looks electric. You could see the potential when he was playing back in NA, but it was not unlocked until he was with this team. And Bea, the most impressive thing to me is that he's a young player. It's mm -hmm. his first time on a top-level team like mm -hmm. this, and he's not just playing duelists. The guy's flexing yes. around so many different roles and is electric on every one of them. And that is so important, Mimi, because the fact that he comes from being a duelist means that he knows exactly what a duelist needs to succeed, and he's going to be uh, at that kind of initiator that's sets everything well for you. And when he's on the duelist, he knows exactly how to complement that. And going back a little bit to what we were talking about, Ang, Narrate was the player that he wanted the most out of all of them. After just talking to him for a couple of days, he, he was like, I know exactly what I'm going to do with you. Yeah, I mean, the talent scouting from this team is on. Oh, when the real process was long, you know how they, you know, you, you have your interviews and everything. They took a lot of time. Obviously, Ang just loves to put a lot of time into everything that he does, uh, into selecting these players. And he definitely has paid off. I mean, 
think about what a risk that is to see a player in Tier 2 North America not performing, ship them halfway across the world, move them to Berlin, apply for all their visas, sign Egg them, knows. pay them. He it's has that so look. Much. He and has that it's look. It's all paid off. Yeah, my favorite thing about that is after one scrim, one trial, and was like, yeah, you're not going to play duelists. Uh, learn, learn, learn these <laughs> eight like, <laughs> Yeah, learn them, and you're going to be the best. And uh, speaking of Narrate, he gave us oh. a little insight to the game plan, to their game plan even coming into this Masters. Take a look at this. Give everyone a reason to watch Madrid. Give them one reason as to why they should tune into your game. Uh, we're just gonna f peak everything. <laughs> okay. Woo! Come on, oh, clap it. we gotta give them a round of applause for that. Uh, do you think that's a good game plan? You know, I think for yeah. such a young player, the guys are <laughs> 21, so, such maturity being shown in that statement. Yeah, you, you can will. take him off the duel list. You can't take the duel list. I mean, like. But more importantly, is that a good game plan? You think that's gonna work here? I think you have he's to take risks. He's full of it. He's full of no, it. No. He doesn't mean it. I, he he doesn't he, mean he's just gonna do that. But yeah. I think that <laughs> this team has also shown a willingness to enable the, their players to take those risks when they need to. It's a similarity they have with mm. other top teams at this event, like Sentinels, being willing to sometimes break that and let their players just be strong individuals. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we need the KC versus Sentinel game, by the way. Like, I don't know what. Yes. I don't care oh. what else happens. As I mean, Brent Bren already need put that. it in the script, yeah, so we we're need, getting it. We need it a clout uh, matchup, but let's. Shift gears to FPX over here. Uh, again, uh, some different changes coming into this. Uh, Mimi, do we like these changes? What do we think? I mean, I'll be honest. If there's a team who's just going to and shoot them, it would be, I was gonna it would be this squad. Uh, this is their first year in the Chinese League now that it's kicked off. But we've seen this squad before at previous global events. Yes. But they've made some changes since then. Picking up Life, who you might be familiar with from his time with EDG and with Attacking Soul Esports, noted a teammate of HFMI 0 DZJC. Long, the long name guy, uh, but he's now on this there, roster. Yeah. I almost got it. It's it's been a while. But they've also picked up Autumn from Tier Two, yeah. uh, or from the OCE scene mm. that is, and moved him into this roster. But they still have the kind of identity of yes. that old FPX. Yeah, exactly. Um, it is funny because I think they uh, interpret the, the game in a different way. I think that the regions are uh, very different in yes. that sense. You know, playing the double duelist, the double controller, just focusing uh, on those surprise plays and being very aggressive not giving that value also to the information. We don't see the Sova, we don't see the Sky, we don't see uh, all of the things that we have seen in the past. They interpret the game in a different way. And that is what I'm very excited to see, because as you said, probably this is one of the teams that's going to pick them a lot. So if Narit wants to go into those aim duos, he's going to get them day one. Yeah, and on their, their map pool, four out of seven of the maps they play, they're playing double duelist comps. All yeah. the other comp, it's not, it's or double dive comps, that is. It's not double duelist because they're playing arena or, or a chamber. chamber. Yeah, right? I mean... Like, these guys have compositions that kind of remind me of like early days Paper X, where they just will put something ridiculous together and they will just run at you, but they have incredible aimers and solid enough synergy to make it work even against some impressive teams. I mean, I'm glad that you guys mentioned Autumn as well, but I was sitting in the press conference yesterday just listening to some of the answers coming from Berlin. One thing that I am extremely impressed with and also a tiny bit concerned with is that Berlin is making all of his calls in Chinese and then translating himself into English before every round to make sure that Autumn knows what the game That's plan unreal. is. And he said that some of the other players are also chipping in with that communication, but he feels that the, the comms get really, really flustered when they are not sure if they're trying to speak Chinese or trying to speak uh, English. But Mimi, the fact that they're making it work is pretty impressive. Yeah, it absolutely is. And you have to give a little history on this guy, Autumn. He's the yeah. first player from OCE, the first Australian to ever qualify to a global event in Valorant, which is pretty cool to see that, that come through. But it is definitely a challenge, right? Moving up that language barrier for players who have only ever been speaking Chinese in comms. It's very different yeah. to have to make that change. I mean, everyone is adapting. And uh, speaking of a challenge, earlier I spoke with Autumn about the language barrier he's had to overcome and put him to the test. Take a look at this. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's me here, Yingsu. I'm now joined by Autumn from FPX. Hi, Autumn. Uh, welcome to an international event. Now, uh, you joined a Chinese team uh, last year, so I wanted to ask you about how the comms, how's your Chinese going? Uh, what's it like to uh, be a part of FPX? Yeah, so to answer the question about the comms, it's, uh, pretty, I think it's pretty good now, but when I first joined the team, wasn't like super good. There was a lot of like my other teammates trying to come in English and then sometimes in Chinese I didn't understand exactly 
uh, what was going on. But now I think it's getting a lot better. Just some rounds in clutches. It's not perfect yet, but I think it's uh, it's getting there. Like the more we play, the better it gets. I think within a few months or like towards the end of this year, it will be like perfect. Oh, are you studying hard? I'm trying to, but when, when I'm coming to the event and like playing, I'm not really getting any lessons in there. All right. But well, before that, I had like two lessons a week. Oh, that's a, that's quite a few yeah. lessons a week. I, I'm going to put your uh, knowledge to the test. I yeah. wanted to see how good your Chinese uh, really is. I'm going to give you a few words. Uh, some of these came from your teammate, Life. Uh, some of these came from the FPX fans. I'll start with what Life gave me. So I'm going to give you uh, the words in Chinese. So you just have to tell me what you think it means in English. You yeah. ready? Yeah. Okay. 小心屁股 uh, like what? Uh, care flank. Yes. Care flank. Yeah, perfect. Got a spot on. So that came, that one came from life. Uh, now I, I got a couple of the ones from your fans. Uh, they wanted to test your Chinese as well. I'll start with an easy one. Uh, Chiu Tian. Uh, autumn. My name. Perfect. These lessons are great. Uh, Fen Si. Fen Si. Fen Si. Fen si. I'm not too sure on that. Uh, like it kind of sounds like what it is in English. If I give you a clue. Fence. Yes. Perfect, thanks. thanks. There we go. Um, Aldalia. Australia. Is there anything that you don't actually know? I feel like I need to make these a, a little bit harder. Um, Dweyo. Dweyo. Uh, like, I know Dwey is right. Um, Dweyo. Like, there's people? There's, Kinda, yeah, yeah, you're there's there. There's a person? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, your people that you sit next to maybe when you play? Oh, like teammates. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to ask you a question. So I know the Chinese fans, they like to give players like quite cute nicknames. Um, uh, what do they call you? Do you know? Uh, I think maybe Chotian or Ultraman. Like yeah, Ultraman. Ultraman. Like Ultraman, but oh. Ultraman. And uh, yeah, maybe Chotian Ge, like Autumn Bro. Oh, that's cute. And is there any Chinese words that you've uh, particularly liked that you picked up since playing with FBX? Uh, someone you say a lot, maybe? Piao Liang. Piao Liang. Yeah, when someone makes a great play, it's oh, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, like pretty beautiful. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. Hopefully, we'll see a lot of uh, Piao Liang plays yeah. from you, yeah, yeah. Autumn. Thank you for joining me. Best of luck in this tournament. Thank you. Honestly, I know they're still trying to get their comms uh, up to scratch, but his Chinese is really good. He's, I was surprised, he's good. Good. Uh, but, but also knowing that, you know, he, he he's playing on the jet, he's playing on the most explosive duelist, and he needs the most important comm, you know? He needs to communicate when he's going to go in, or he be, needs to be reactive to that information. You know, he may say that he doesn't speak it, but I was very surprised with the level that he showed. The thing is, though, that it's very different sitting in an interview on a couch versus all of these words being yelled constantly in hectic yeah. comms. It, it's definitely really hard not just to adjust to a new language, but to adjust to it in that environment of a live match. Yeah, I can't wait to see uh, if they're going to be able to bring us something new as well when we get to see them on stage. But uh, speaking of new things, life, we've seen him on the international mm -hmm. stage before. Kakuga, he yes. is back. And uh, what is he bringing to this roster? Yeah, exactly. After not making, after uh, his team not making it through Ascension, he joins this team. And he's like the other half for Autumn when we talk about the duelist and when we talk about a little bit more of the passive uh, aggression, to say it in some sense. And he's going to be the Euro player that we're going to be seeing for the most part. So he's taking not only that uh, uh, that duelist, that, that operator, he's also part of the initiation that this composition is lacking. His communication has to be very, very good and he has to be in a lot of sync with the rest. Yeah, absolutely. For, for life though, I, I think what you can always expect out of him is just electric performances. The guy oh, yeah. is a fantastic gamer. He has been since the first time we saw him mm -hmm. back with EDG. The thing is with how this EDG team, or excuse me, this FPX team plays, they are very explosive. They're playing these double duelist comps, they take a lot of risks and those risks rely on Autumn and Life being successful Literally. when they're going for these double entries because there's a lot of times where there's not the normal initiator utility, not the normal player there to trade. They have to be good for FBX to win, really. Yeah, and uh, we, let's just talk about the Yoru. We, we, we mentioned it. Yes. We're going to talk about I it mean, more. Both these teams. Yes, yes. Uh, but what kind of Yoru do we get out of them? I think they're they're very different. Yeah. For, for Carmen Core, they play Yoru kind of like half KO, half a jet, right? You're, you're 
you're not seeing them very often go for like deep TPs into their opponent's spawn. Instead, they're setting up with fade Yoru flash combos or, or double flash combos on the entry and then diving in with the rays. On the other hand, Bea, yes. FBX's Yoru is teleport <laughs> wherever you please. Uh, go crazy, yes. go ridiculous. It, it's a lot more chaotic to say the least. That's the thing. How is that chaos going to affect Casey way of playing? You know, like taking uh, the duels in couples, being very methodical in how to approach the retakes, for example. I think that FPX is going to be on the surprising side. And uh, I think that that might be a big upset for them. And probably we'll have to, you know, call in some pauses being like, oh, what is going on? But hear me out. If someone can study a, a, a Yoru, it's definitely Aang. I know that they know exactly what to expect uh, from FPX. The, the thing is, though, I think today for Carmen Core, compared to their, their run in EMEA, where they're very prep heavy, they have a lot to kind of specifically counter strat teams and be ahead of the curve on. They're great at that, given the coaching staff of this roster. I think today is going to be a lot more reliant on just the individual players being able to adapt in the server and not getting flustered by the craziness of FPX. That's the thing. They'll drag teams down into the chaos. Yes. It even happened to EDG in the finals and in China. They're very comfortable with it. They will go with the fast rotations, with the fast decisions yes. every single time. So that is the kind of thing that can get into your head and definitely get in the way of your plan. Uh, so let's see if KC is ready for that. Yeah, and remember KC, still all these players, really young. Most of them, their first year playing on the tier one level on a big stage like this in front of a crowd. FBX is a squad that applies a lot of pressure. Carmen Core heavily favored to win this game, but I still think it'll be a test of how they can perform on the stage. I mean, Naray wants to peak everything, so surely they're gonna have to be ready or other people This might be the fastest back. match ever. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just jinxed it, you just jinxed it. Uh, but it's time to get the results of our MasterCard fan poll. Earlier, we asked you which international league you think will win it all between Americas, China, EMEA, and Pacific. And I can reveal to you it has been overwhelmingly uh, America's. 49% of you voted for America's, 10% for China, 26% for EMEA, and only 13 for uh, Pacific. Is this your doing, Mimi? Did you get rally the troops? I, I, okay, let me just say, I literally said there is no favorite <laughs> to win this tournament. I think the finals is Sentinels, Carmen Core. I think that is oh, the that hardest match be... to predict. Jeez. I think that is such a hard match to predict. I think America's looks great right now, though. Sentinels yeah. is in the best form we've ever seen from them. Mm. Loud, as always, is back at an international yeah. event. They're innovating. They have a strong new player in QCK, and they're living into Sonic's vision well. But I think EMEA looks great. I was so impressed with both Heritage That's and That's why you're wearing blue today. That makes so yeah. much sense. What color is it, Yinsu? It is blue. It's blue. It's blue. 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 Uh, and it might, come, uh, it might just come down to some mind games today as well. Coach N and Coach Nathan are standing by for map selection. So let's send it down and see where we're headed. All right, welcome to Map Select presented by Omen. Uh, first match for this entire event. Congratulations to both teams for being here. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, KC, you are a higher seed. Team A or Team B? Team B. Team B. So FPX, you will be Team A, and we will start with your first ban. Uh, first one, split. Split. Your ban, KC? Ban Breeze. You ban Breeze. So map number one from FPX. Pick Icebox. Icebox, side on Icebox. Mm. Defense. Defense. And map number two from KC. Big Lotus. Lotus. Side on Lotus. Attack. Attack. And then we will go into the next set of bands, starting with FPX. You have Ascent, Bind, and Sunset. Band, Bind. Band, Bind. And then your band, you have Ascent and Sunset. Ban Ascent. Ban Ascent. Map number three, by default, is going to be Sunset. FPX. Side on Sunset. Attack. Attack. All right. Great, guys. Good luck to you both. And now, Bea, uh, Casey, they yep. won't get the split, but they will get that Lotus. And this is where in the final we saw them absolutely dismantle. Yeah, uh, Fnatic, they look so good. Yeah, exactly. And I think that they have a very good read on the map, but I'm more surprised by the read that I'm seeing from FPX. Uh, deciding to ban onto that split, to have that flexibility and that understanding that maybe that head to head could go on the favor yeah. of KC. <laughs> so let's just forget about it and just go somewhere completely different. And I think that Icebox is going to be crazy because for the side of uh, KC, they were the one team that decided to keep 
keep that sage in the composition out of all of EMEA and keep it a little bit more traditional when we're talking about probably two of the most untraditional teams that we have here. Honestly, out of most of the world, most most teams are moving yeah, away from true. the sage comp, but I actually still think it's really good. They're playing oh, yeah. the old last year default comp, just subbing out that Sova for the Gecko. Reason for that change, drone nerf map changes, makes it a lot harder to clear yeah. B main. Gecko, there's so many positions on attack. You can refresh that Dizzy. You can re-clear in the mid round. His ult is also really powerful and very farmable on Icebox. I think that's sick. You can also combine the wall with the wingman to plant. Yeah. They have really good ideas with this comp. On the other hand, FPX are playing Reyna Jet. Yeah, Reyna Jet, Gecko, and double controller. Without a Sentinel, we can expect, for example, on mid, someone is going to have to completely, literally, you have to put a man there to control the space. Yeah. Probably is going to be uh, the Geckos just to throw a little bit of utility, but it definitely makes things complicated to uh, dwell around the map. Now in the attack, just try break the Dizzy and the Leer at the same time. Just try. Is that and it? Then, and then a Paranoia will appear. Oh gosh, I can't wait, I can't wait. I feel like, <laughs> I, I mean, I set it up as a possible mind game. Crazy. And I think the mind games were played well. This is it. The wait is over. Our teams are ready. And it's time to kick off the first global VCT event of the year. It's Carmichael versus FPX, Genji versus Loud. Day one of Masters Madrid starts right now. So this is how it's gonna go. America's is all about the noise and the volume. We're gonna end on a decisive 13 to three victory with a knife kill to close out the match. Then, when it's time to celebrate, we're not even gonna shake hands. Just leap on the table, lift the trophy, and fight it to make sure it's real. Tonight, I want to know what it's This is Magaling sa control at paging aggressive ang Pacific. Maaaring isuko namin ng ilang rounds, pero tatapusin namin ito sa 13 to 10 na panalo at jet knives sa buong mapa. Sisiguro hindi namin ayakapin ang mga palaban. Dahil kakailangan nila ito. Iyuko kami bilang pasasalamat sa mga tagahanga habang inaangat namin ang trophy. Hindi ba maganda? Yeruci-en赛区选手的精准度爆发力，其他队伍休想拿下任何一分。我们将以十三比零完胜，并与判官团灭掉对手，结束比赛。当我们在欢呼中举起奖杯时，我们会仁慈的感谢对手所做的
More like absolute defeat. <laughs> Director's cut. Celebrity coming through. <laughs> You look pretty cool. Really? Yeah, yeah. I look some like superstar, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys tell me uh, about the Pacific playstyle? It's like a game like the kids. And if there's a strong attack, it's the best thing to do with detail. I think sometimes we can play like five duelists, three duelists, maybe even no duelists. It doesn't matter, you know, because we always press W. Are you guys going to take down America's uh, in Madrid? Mm, maybe. I mean, they kind of beat us before, so maybe some revenge, you know? The EMEA regions, I would say our strongest part is the balance between uh, Macron and Aim. <laughs> oh, we actually are the future of the NBA. It's Fnatic and Navi, we're both top two in the EU. We both knocked them out. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Congrats to making it there. Thank you, man. You're expecting Boaster, right? Spanish org, Spanish crowd and everything. I feel like it was destined that Heretics were at Madrid's. People, they think it was a fluke. So we're gonna show them that it's not. It's time for the new generation to take over. Hey, you got this, bro. One of us will make it to the finals, mate, I promise you. Uh, today, I'm very happy to be able to meet Fun Pass with them here to film. And today, I'm also very happy to be able to meet with Life. And I'm also very happy to be able to meet with them. <laughs> in your opinion, what makes VCT China so competitive? I think it's because we don't have Kanka. Then, more and more, the king follows me. I know they love me. 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 I think the VCT and CN environment is good, not only for you and me. The environment is more like a family and family. Hello, my name is Dan. Hello, my name is Dan. I'm a little girl. It's a little girl. It's a little girl. I'm tired. It's a little girl. It's a little girl. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now, we're very happy that we're here. We're here together. 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 Fotinha? Fotinha. Fotinha. Vamos lá. Surprises, we've seen it all on the regional stage, but can these teams 
continue their dominance when the stage is so much bigger and the stakes are so much higher. For Carmen Cara, most of these players were picked up from Tier 2, were new prospects heading into this year. They've done something incredible by beating the best in EMEA, coming out as champions from that region. But now it's a new pressure, it's new opponents, it's new styles on a big stage. And FPX, if they are one thing, they are a team that can upset, that can yes. surprise, they can push you off guard. And every single team, because of the opponents that they're going to be facing, are so hungry to be the yes. winners of this tournament. You were saying it, Mimi. Anybody can win this tournament. The favorites are very, you know, in the air. Anybody uh, can take this game. And I think the FPX is hungry, is devoted to change our minds, to just not thinking that China is just EDG. Yeah, we've seen a lot of rookies this year, you know. It seems yeah. like the rise of all the rookies, but it's been such a long time since N was on this stage. And just to remind you, the two tournaments that N made globally, he won one of them and he reached a final to the other one. So he's got a lot to prove coming into this as well. I mean, technically, the next one he's going to get grouped or, or what is he's not making it to playoffs? He's going down one. Uh, no, 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 I'm not about that life. For FPX, it's been a while since they've been on an international yes. stage. This team has represented at previous events, but they didn't make it to champions. The big event at the end of last year, they made some changes, picked up stars into this year, and I think are looking better than they used to, but still have that same identity, right? They play weird comps, and Icebox is no different. They're playing a Jet Reina Gecko composition. Well, at least we expect so. Yeah. Did you imagine they changes? Could, they could definitely change it. They've had time to do so. I mean, we've seen that already, right? Teams are starting to adopt uh, the Na'Vi way of having multiple comms uh, on yeah. one map. I don't think they will change anything coming into this, uh, but Mimi, it will very much disrupt uh, their preparation if they did. It absolutely will, but this event had very low turnaround time for, yes, for the teams exactly. that went deep, especially for a team like KC, who played so many matches. They had to go through the they group needed stage, the through the, the playoffs, <laughs> through the playoffs. Like, there really hasn't been a huge amount of time yeah. to turn around new ideas, which is why I, again, think that today, in a match like this, it's really going to come down to, to yeah. adaptation, to the leaders in the servers, and not necessarily the coaches in the prep ahead of I time. Think, I think it's going to be all about exploiting the weaknesses, and I can see a lot of them in the FBX comp. Uh, the, the way that you have to play it, the way that you uh, have to default, having, as I said, someone always in the middle. We do not see many teams playing 2-1-2 uh, on a map. This is not New York, by the way. But, yeah, but and as we can see from the agent select here, what do you guys make of this? I mean, it's, it's what we expected, right? Yeah. I, I think looking at Carmen Corsa, starting on defense. Their biggest strength with this composition is their retakes. They have Sage Wall and Wingman to get on that spike, and they have good flash utility with that Dizzy to fight forward. FPX, I think, need to be taking space past the spike site if they're planting on B or holding forward on A and kind of having a, a, a scaling defense where they start forward and move back to not yeah. fall victim to these retakes. And I think it's so important what you're mentioning with the retakes because that is what has made the difference uh, out of for most of the teams, especially in EMEA. Can AC was the best. The protocols were the cleanest probably out of the entire world, the way that they were playing off yes. of pairs and knew exactly what utility to invest. And again, exploiting the weaknesses even with the retakes. Out of this entire tournament, they have the highest success after the spike has been planted. You have to watch this jet head to head. Autumn and yes. Martin, both of them prospects at their first international event on the star roll for Icebox. Oh, I can't wait to see it. But that is enough from us. I know there's been uh, two gentlemen waiting in the flanks waiting a very very long time to cast Carmichael give a warm welcome to Bren and Saito. Thank you very much Yitsu <laughs> yeah I'm gonna let loose an Ale Le Bleu at some point maybe potentially we'll bias casters online mate I mean I don't know we'll get into it it's Madrid here the Swiss stage day one to get us started Carmen Core versus FPX you know you've got potentially quite a one-sided matchup here on paper but a real chance to potentially show some of that parity that might be there at these international events I mean Magnum has spoken in press interviews as well, talking about how, you know, they're familiar, I think, with the way that FPX are going to be playing, but they're not going to be coming into this underestimating a team like FPX. No, certainly not. Magnum quoted in the press conference saying, it's Valorant, anyone can lose. Here we go then, into the pistol round, and Carmen Core had three players up towards A, anticipating this space control perhaps, but FPX are not committed with it. Not quite flash to clear with the Dizzy, all combined up. That's going to be the dash active now for Martin. Using that in the response of it, but there's no go button press here for FPX. Keen to just wait this one out on the opposite side of the map. Autumn went poking around, and he managed to catch Tomasi. Good opening here. I mean, it does open up the B side entirely. A repeat from Live. He's got the heal online, but Martin returns with the kill. 
Nice trade. Lysor didn't buy the orb in this round, so having to use the wall in order to escape there, that means there's going to be no wall placed down over towards B. So Carmen Core are going to have opportunities to try to deny this plant, though they are players down. That's true with the paranoia here, FPX. One of the sight lines blocked off. Now look at this, the Omen Smokes are lovely for them to take more aggressive positions on site. Kamako all up towards Kitchen, doubled up here, but just picking and choosing their battles at the right time. They have no idea. They have no idea where they're being shot from. Through the greats here, one player left standing is Liso. We'll see what they can do. Snake bites, at least one connection, but the wall's up in their face. They've got to really just get a move on as well, wrapping all the way around here. Shin sticking to the fuse here for the pistol round. It's all Carmen Core. And that's the power of that retake. It's what the desks were talking about, Carmen Core look so good in those kind of situations. But really, the retake wasn't even where the danger was averted for FBX. It was the fact that Magnum was able to pick off two from this angle. I mean, yeah, looking all over the place. Look Ultimate at I mean, is completely lost. On us with them. And this is where you might start to see the cracks in FPX because they've talked about the fact that the language barrier has been an issue for them, a really big one in the past. Berlin said in the press conference he's having to repeat the communications twice a lot of the time in English and in Chinese so that everybody on the team is on the same page. That's going to introduce delays, and it was an unusual position anyway for Magnum to be taking that fight. The pistol round secured, deep home and smoke. Magnum has to body check a lot of this space, really. There was some danger there, but clears out towards mid, knowing that nobody's lurking. And those lurks are going to be a pretty important part of how FBX creates threats on the attack side. Smokes from Lysor and Berlin need to be dealt with. And sometimes that's going to require face checking, and when there's opponents hiding inside smokes, that's a great way for teams to get upset wins. Yeah, here we go. Offloading the util here with a dizzy. Player's not been pushed off from the backwards positions, though, out towards the back and aside. It's a nasty and messy spray. No kills collected there, but only just for life here with the heal online. But now reinforcements are here, finally arriving. Multitudes of targets to pick from, but really Carmen Court coming up green in the kill feed. Blue, surely. I mean, well, okay. Some kind of teal. It's a teal. You could, you could make <laughs> the argument. <laughs> yeah, easy cleanup, despite it looking a little laboured there from the right early on. And now FPX, first round where they can do some serious damage after the pistol. Five Vandals facing off against KC, who have three Bulldogs online as well. Turret out. Clear weaponry advantage for FPX, especially down these longer angles, so they might want to take over towards B. And defaulting the Viper Wall, A, at the start of this round. Not quite the same as they did on the pistol, because this time we've got that Viper Orb coming down mid too. Does have that threat of potentially working their way through into mid. I'm a call lovely. Would love to set their sights onto a bonus round conversion. As you said, longer fights to be taken with the rifles of FPX, and they're cautious just at the beginning, initially here. They don't want to run into things. Omen Smoke. Now propped up, will divide up the side and allow them to start to take a bit more of that space once they clear through the appropriate positions. But we're almost down to a minute on the clock. And they haven't created too many threats oh. in mid either. Almost wow. betrayed there by the ponytail, but Shin gets away with it. And Berlin with nobody there to try to support. The IGL gets picked off with no advantage, no possibility of a trade, no information even as to where Shin and Martin could have repositioned to. As FBX come back in here, they're going to have to use these flashes, the Dizzy, just to try to figure out where those players on defensive A would have gone. Yeah, and it orchestrates kind of exactly where these FBX players are going. Now it really does feel like it's going to be landing into an A hit. Shin, it's a great timing saved. on the wall. Yeah, I mean, for the precisely right moment. The right flash over the top, it's going to be going straight through the gap at the top there. Good connection. Martin willing to take the fight, the transfer damage. Done, but no kill. In fact, that's all life here, just leading the charge for the rest of his team. Is there only going to be. Clean up onto Shin eventually. But Very time, weak. 12 seconds, and yeah, life is weak. Pops the ult off. Might be able to get something going with this one. At least he's one more kill for it. Nobody watching. Back there up, it got is. Auto. Back up. Need to get the plan down. Four seconds. Taps. Taps. Force it into the one we want. It's the only win condition for life. And time is born and played. Frantic in the minute. In the minute moments. I mean, minutia making the difference there. That's a wild one for FBX to not convert, honestly. 
The spray from Martin was really labored, a little similar to Narei when we saw him with the Bulldog in round two. Ten seconds left. But how Magnum gets past there without Life being able to get the kill? Life whiffing on the spray means that Autumn goes down. And Life unable to convert in the 1v1 as well. Was he decided to go for that uh, the, the duel instead of just sticking the plant? That's a tragedy for FPX early on. Back to me. Knocks the economy down a peg or two, so gonna be working with some weaker weaponry. Life's gonna be after making the most, I think, of this Guardian purchase. It looks fairly explosive here over towards B. Aeon having that ult online. It would be a really large investment early on before you've managed to create a pick for yourself. Yeah. Smoke's finally back online now to just cut off sections onto the site. Snake Mites and Molly's just in case they want to press the advantage and push also back at the site. But it's just being held for control here. Carmen Core happy to play this retake. A lot of focus being put on that angle where Magnum managed to pick up two on the pistol. A weak spot, perhaps. We'll see now. There's Wingman. That's going to be spotting out a player or two. Berlin. Let's get the initial kill, but not enough to get the follow up here. But down below the bridge. Where's the expectation of it? Narrate, he was dropping down, but not enough bullets in the clip to really finish him off. 3v3 shots. Life regaining the advantage potentially there. It's traded back and forth. It's Narrate versus Ayang. Narrate comes up with the goods. Rifle in his hands to get the job done. And plenty of time left on the clock, too. That one had danger in it. It absolutely did. But Kami Kors still managed to forge their way up to four. FPX deciding not to invest Aeyang's ultimate into that round, where perhaps you know, it could have made the difference. It did end up being fairly close. Frankly, if Autumn even gets that kill, the round is looking really dodgy. I gotta say, while Carmen Core are up 4 0 here. This okay, is guys, not the same level of clinical play that we saw from them in the EMEA when they were making that run. There's a lot of conversation about because we've seen so many unexpected teams make it to Masters Madrid with so many rookie players as well ascending to this premier level of the game. Are people going to adapt to the stage quickly? If you have some nerves, how do you play through it? It feels like it's a little touch and go at the moment for Carmen Core, but enough to be able to get them over the line in these rounds. And similar nerves on the other side for FBX. You've got to remember, FBX are a team. This is their third time getting to a global event. They've only ever been able to take one map at a global event before, and that was against the old Carmine Core when they played first time at Lockin. It was a 2-1 victory in favor of Carmen Core, and that was that was the old, you know, Melons lineup. That wasn't the <laughs> that wasn't the Madrid clean, clinical, calming core yeah. that we've come to expect after their running kickoff. It's well-honed squad and, you know, to just touch on that rookie point as well, you know, maybe that an experience rearing its head for some of the players. Uh, calming core looking like one of the youngest rosters I think we've got coming into Madrid. They are, yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe that does showcase. Of course, some of them do have that international experience. They do, and, you know, you see Magnum up there towards the top, managed to find that hole in the pistol round and has been very consistent so far on the defense side for his team. So we get to see another rifle round here, starting to get up towards some big ultimates too. Narrate and Magnum's ults in particular are going to be excellent on the retake as Narrate takes first contact and wants to hunt for more. He's not scared, is he? No, Shin was holding up towards the belt, so he had angles covered. Martin's crosshair placement looked like it might have been off for just a moment as Aeyang's head poking below, but I don't believe they caught any whiff of the jet stuck in that corner. I say stuck, hiding. Hiding. He's got the starting dash, a course, trap. To get out. Yeah, it's a lovely position to play in. FPX didn't quite like what they were seeing just from cutting the noise there. They show a bit of that presence just initially, now making their way over towards B. Contact reclear, is that what's going to be called here? Certainly looks like it. The same kind of B end with that double omen smoke setup that we've seen here. from FPX in a few rounds so far. Util combined together, unfortunate for life there. He will fall just through the smoke as it was propped up. Bloomed and blossomed, but FPX keen to still play this one. Maybe a bit more aggressively as well. Look at the position of some of these players. Berlin taking a peek out towards Kitchen. Expected though, now you see it. Thrash exchanged. Dropping down onto either side. Attainment potentially there. 
looks like it, yeah, Berlin. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And now positioning, being swarmed and approached from every possible angle. I saw, realizing now that really has to give it up. It was on that mid position. He was the insurance policy, but now has to save that rifle. Gutting as Carmen Core get up to five. Absolutely putting away FBX. I, this is looking like they've got a very good idea of how they want to deal with this classic exec that we're seeing from FBX. Nobody is getting caught on sight. Tomaji is just getting a kill by spamming a common angle where he's expecting them to be pushing up, yeah. defending that over push into Snowman and making sure that they have the pieces together to be able to get back in onto sight. FBX are finding it difficult here to force the fight. It's one of the big powers of their uh, composition is the ability to combo flashes together. And they're not really finding an opportunity to do that because Kamikor are playing so much further back. Initial expenditure of util, but they are playing really far back. I mean, that's just the retake protocols. Get out of my way. Desk was mentioning it. It's super, super well drilled for Kamikor. Yeah, the bread and butter really of you know what was getting them so many of the wins because they were looking so well honed. And there's always a little bit of danger when you allow your opponents to plant against you so often that you wouldn't be able to pull it off. You know, most teams, even the great ones, are only converting something like, you know, a third of their retakes. But these teams at this event are looking to try to change that. So this makes it feel like it's something similar over towards B, but it's not a full commitment. No, in fact, they haven't used both the smokes. I mean, Berlin hasn't locked off the angle, so they're getting information the entire time. Magnum has just been egoing the angle on B. And Martin. Ready, waiting, not spotted in this position before. Be able to receive this. Now, Dizzy wasn't collected over towards B to clear it, so they don't even have that util to clear this angle. Oh. Up top, though, yeah, crosshair pace, man. You've got to take a gamble if you play in that spot. It could come from two different directions, so gambling incorrectly there. Life is the one to capitalize. Magnum, though, still with ultimate. How does FPX deal with that? Put down with a wingman, clears out a bit off the side. Now the plan online, but here's the lockdown. Oh, hey, I'm denied ball. from even going for that. They can't go for the plan. Time, time. They have to fight this one. FBX has to make a call to do so, but now detainment is going to be happening anytime soon. This is a round basically done and dusted. Online there with a res. Magnum back into the fight. Three versus three, but with time like this, I mean, there's just no chance. You have to kill everybody. It's not there for FBX. And awesome. a complete, complete tactical outplay there by KC. They're thinking ahead to... In terms of the ultimates that they have available, it's very clear that that lockdown is going to get used. And FBX didn't come up with a game plan quickly enough to try to challenge it before it went down. Didn't have a game plan to try to increase the tempo. And I think we're just expecting to get the plant for free. They're thinking, all right, Casey, they've been playing retake this entire time. They're just going to use lockdown. We're going to be able to play the plant. And Aeon could not get that spike down. I love to see this. The overall game plan of Carmen Court just fundamentally is fantastic as well. They've been playing super far back on B, almost conditioning that they've got nobody playing towards B main or towards yellow whatsoever. And then they're playing these one and angles towards A. I mean, yes, Martin ended up falling, but uh, they've just been doing such a fantastic job. And like you said, you know, too delayed in terms of just thinking about the game plans. Can't call one step ahead. This is also the second timeout for FBX, called already. So if we you know, framing this in the context of FBX trying to get this revenge matchup against a Kamikor that's retooled so heavily, looking for a potential good beginning to Madrid. This is a disaster. They had their chances early on in some of these rounds, but the later that this is going, the less and less chance it looks like they're getting as Kamikor polish things up a little and get comfortable, get into the groove. Down 0-6 without any timeouts remaining. If they don't end up winning this rifle round that we're about to watch, the disaster zone. That could be dire. I mean, they are quite literally running their heads into a brick blue wall right now. <laughs> they cannot find a way through. Now, are they going to get conditioned? You can see elements of it from Kamikor again. Like I was saying before, they weren't playing anybody up close towards B. They've got Martin with a knot now. He's playing in this spot. Kamikor, I think, are hoping now that FPX make the decision to start contacting into B. Dizzy broken. Martin can now play. Onto the angle, it's watched for the shot. Missed and go to wide. But they haven't heard the dash. They know that Martinez has not left that in a hurry. 
There they hear the shot from the operator, and Martin's going to bait that out, make it feel like he's still there, and try to rotate to anticipate this attack side rotate that Berlin is calling. Yeah, and he is. He's already called it for the rotation. The troops on the move. And guess what, Martin? Again, Here. one step ahead. Like you said, still has the dash in his back pocket. Didn't end up using it to escape. A lot of flashes that he has to dodge here, though. Leah, Dizzy, both broken. Narate with a pick. I mean, Narate just back towards Rafters there. Dizzy also returning as well, getting the acknowledgement that his play is there. Now, there's 45 seconds left. Could pivot into a different direction if you want to, but FPX looking a bit indecisive, just a pause in the play. Now the paranoia sent flying here, but again, no connections. Martin towards the back. Trying to go wide here with a Dizzy. Narate is on one, man. He's on one. Almost there for the ace, but four kills eventually shut down in the end, but seven to zero. The scoreline we're looking like the round differential is immense right now, and you're truly seeing it. I mean, we said on paper it was going to look like one of our more one-sided matchups, but Carmen Core, in almost just every element of the game right now, they're ahead of it. And they're destroying them. I <laughs> think Kukuga said on the desk, trying to break the Leah and the Dizzy in one go, and it's like, yeah, bet. <laughs> Just rinses them both before FBX can use them to get into the site and then swings around for four kills afterwards. FBX are getting pasted. And I, th I think it's a really interesting idea, right? This is one of our most one-sided matchups you could possibly see at the tournament Whoa. on paper. But what does the parity look like? Everybody was saying, you know, anyone can win Madrid. There are chances for even these teams to be able to make upsets. Even Magnum himself, you know, coming into this. They're not going to make a mistake with prior teams, you know. Maybe they turn up to these international tournaments, they expect to have a, a freebie, an opening match that just is so one-sided. But I'm, of course, still showing him respect. Absolutely. Yeah, Magnum said, quote, if I had to rate FPX in terms of macro, I think they have a lot of gaps. And then he said, but it's Valorant, anyone that can lose. Martin, under pressure though. Yep, Dizzy in his face though, it does fade away. He's just absolutely caught a timing still. Autumn will shut down a counterpart. Damage done, but no kill collected. Smokes at some point surely going to be fading. How are they going to get this fight down? They really don't have any options or tools, but there we go. That's a huge one. Yep, a gap available with that up drop down. Autumn picks it up, acquiring that upgrade. Now we can really just see if he can hunt for any more sort of kills. Now this is a player advantage for FPX. The question is now, how do Carmen Court approach it? Dizzy, down to the back along with the molly. Players all over the place, Thrash to lead the charge, entertainment there, Shin. Round to the side, but doesn't expect Berlin, and there it is, okay. A round on the board for FPX. Thrifty win. And that one basically set up by Autumn getting into a nice spot. Martin has been caught out in a number of these more aggressive positions. And this is the opening. He had a chance trying to take the timing. But then Autumn also finding this pick onto Tamashi over in Snowman. That sets up the player advantage. And FBX are finally able to capitalize and bring around to themselves. Can they work this into a little bit of momentum and make it less of a one-sided matchup? They would love to. Now, back into the action, you're seeing it. Line in the sand drawn in terms of the skirmish, Berlin. Berlin has the he's operator. the operator, yeah, I mean, he's TP close. Yeah, of course your IGL Omen has the off. <laughs> Angel emote. Uh. Now an attempt for them to try and get themselves into the side wall. Definitely impeding them. Dash to the top here, Dizzy in their faces, everybody. Not able to see really anything at all, but FPX Brands hit the site now, so that's online for them. A four position here, playing inside the pit. This is really going to test Kamiko once more, especially with Autumn ripping off heads. Here. Towards the back of the side, just really impossible to clear this through. And here it is, momentum on the side of FPX. This is basically a done deal into the round. Look at it, second one on the board. Now maybe you can start to keep this going. That's huge. Didn't even have to use all of the ultimates at their disposal. Still have the Thrash available for them in the next. And FBX using the pit to be able to establish much more aggressive post plant positions. Put pressure on KC before they can get into retake spots. Night, night. Look, the just flooding out heaven there thinking, yeah, they're going to give us this space for free. That's what they've done every other time. And FBX have brought the battle to them. Amazingly enough, those two rounds have actually been enough to knock down the economy of Carmichael. So we're not seeing a full buy here. I think the money would be flourishing, but...
instead. Okay. At least Martin has a rifle. Here. Here. Really quite aggressive into mid. Very aggressive. But Martin hasn't been able to do too much from these extremely aggressive positions. He's the danger in the round. The rest of KC mostly playing for a little bit of plant pressure and then the retake. Martin's been the dice that they roll to see whether he can find value. And this time, just missing the timing of FPX, who've all gone into B. Clear and Dizzy all comboed up. Smokes to get himself into the deeper angle. Autumn is here this time. Not using our second smoke to block off this one. Autumn, he's got the operator. Aiming to lock this one down. Two potential positions. Shin, he's taking out Berlin. Now Berlin's been playing in that angle all the time, honestly. Most of the time. Yeah, and it's a spot where Autumn can't actually hold for Berlin to get into position. It's a bit of a freebie there, actually. Kamikor giving it. Decent damage there, actually. Yeah, diligence being shown with the util to clear through most of this. Uh, Casey have a wall to work with, but there's a thrash on the other side. Martin, what a peak! What a return! Ayang goes straight there, and here it is with a spray down of life. Wall can't save you from that one. Great awareness from life. Adapting to what Kamikor have been doing, making sure that he's in a position where he's still going to be able to get picks over the top of the wall. FBX holding on in these post plant situations. <laughs> I mean, Ayak is like lining up a shot with Martin and Tomaji's right behind. FBX going from 0-7 to winning three rounds in a row with the potential to make this quite a competitive half. Yeah, you wouldn't think it. You would not think it if you were only tuning in for the beginning, but they have the chance. Slow warp. Used here, Shin feeling the danger now, the heat turned up, that isn't, okay, slow up, don't think it was intended for that one, Molly's being used, snake bite, here close, and there it is actually, that bouncing into that wrong angle, Martin can't evacuate, can he stand his ground, can he hold it down, the answer is no. And that's probably going to incentivize Nare to try to make a play here, instead of just playing for the player down retake, we get to see now, do they trust the system, do they try to go for the hero play? Man down here, snake by forwards, life. Tucking behind the box, out into the open though, has to just spank on the rest of his teammates. Lovely movement from Ayang, Magnum. Nasty stuff! Oh my! Almost making a go of it. So close. And Berlin, the player with the open hand, the goes for the rifle to win the 1v1 at the end and keep this momentum going for FPX. KC making a good job of it despite the fact that they were down players. But this opening play as Shin swings to try to relieve pressure from Martin. Martin can't quite get enough kills to help. Final round of the half here, and KC are going to be knocked down to four Bulldogs. There is a great chance that FBX get up to five and rewrite this terrible beginning they had to Icebox. That's just insanity. The pick got popped down over towards B. No immediate pressure. So Tomaji might think that the rest of FPX are looking to work down mid or over towards A. Martin once again alone on A, tucking himself into these aggressive, unexpected positions. But generally, FPX have been able to either dodge or deal with it. It's slow and somewhat ponderous, though, for FPX in the first 40 seconds of this round. Now they're making a commitment to deal with some of Magnum's utility in mid and create threats and pressure around Autumn. a leg. Oh, it's betrayal. And there it is, sets up Autumn for an easy one. No possibility of that being rezzed. It's now being offloaded, dash towards of Autumn, top of the box, just spotting. Head of Shin, unable to rip that one off, but Berlin's caught into the mid flank. And now the ult online, Magnum. Has that retake ultimate that caused so much pressure for FBX previously? Could be opting to use this as a really forward backside position. FBX are trying to fight this one. Then they realize at least now that the lockdown is down, but do they have any util to try and fight this one and clear it? Oh, and through, they don't need util, man. They got guns and weaponry still locked down. Didn't get broken. 1v2. He's out of dodge here from FBX. The positioning is going to be known and noted. In the rate. How do you hit that into the 1v1? Wingman. Exactly the partner in crime that you'd want, at least taps out of position, trying to force life out into the open, but it's a guessing game for the rate entirely, doesn't know where he is, and life playing time immaculately! It's seven to five, and how the bloody hell did FBX salvage that? What a ridiculous comeback! 
We were all ready to talk about how it was playing out as expected on paper, and then FBX fire back with five in a row. One enemy remaining. And a lot to do with the rifling coming online. I feel like Aeyang has just woken up. Go on, go on, look at me, bro. Let's go. They're fired up. They're feeling it. Life on his feet. They certainly are. Let's send it down to the analyst desk to bring it down for the half. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, what a great half that was. A nice comeback from FPX, but Kakuka, yep. it all started with a great chain of rounds coming from Casey. Yeah, exactly. And it was a perfect example of what we were discussing, right? Those retakes coming in, the protocols being completely sharp up, uh, coming in from Casey. I think that round five is a perfect example of it when we would see the exchange of the ultimates from Gecko, and they know exactly where to put the pressure and how to address everything that is going on in the map by the positions that they expect the other players to be in. The follow-up from each of the players, it's clean. But but then after those seven rounds, something changes in FBX maybe. And for FBX, I think the adaptation was really good. In these post plants, once they got that spike down, once they got that space, they were using that second dizzy refresh to fight forward and get space in these late rounds and really punish yeah. KC while they were still setting up, getting their util in hand. That's the X factor of this team. They will sometimes pull out these hyper-aggressive rounds where they stop you from setting up the way you want to play. It was really good yeah. on that comeback. I think it was a little bit of, of both, right? We have a KC that made this getting too comfortable because everything is working and an FPX that, you know, it starts making a little bit of mistakes. We see, um, you know, the flashes being a little bit separated one from another, but then when they realize that they just have to disrupt that and just keep pushing a little bit more, that changes. Now, coming into their defense, as I said, it's very complicated to defend this map without a Sentinel. The aggression has to be there. FPX is very known for that and they have to keep it up if they want to keep that score. It absolutely does, but if KC wants to close this map out, they have the fans to do so in this arena right now. There's, there's not a huge amount of fans out on day one, but every single KC fan feels like 10 of them. Yeah, shout out to the Gentlemates fan as well in the Gentlemates jersey, uh, but this blue war, it is looking so, so strong, but I'm going to send this back to the casters and see if KC can close this one out. Let's we'll see if they can close it out, but listen, FPX, kind of momentum behind them as well. All it takes is a pistol round. You've got an even match, at least an even map. And uh, this is a team, and I mean, a reminder, I think this is an FBX squad that's got a bit of a chip on their shoulders from the previous international appearances. They want to turn up to this event, and they want to really prove as well that teams should be paying attention to them. They want to teach teams how it's done. They've literally said that themselves. Uh, for yeah. Carmen Court, left reeling a little bit, I think, as well, off that string of rounds, but we'll see. It's a new half now, getting started with a pistol. And it looks like there might be a clash in B main to begin this one very quickly. It's an unusual spot to fight over. Not too many teams trying to fight this area aggressively. But FPX have got a pistol round strat what? that involves them pushing down mid off the back of this pressure. Yeah. And the Viper Wars. They've Wars actually abandoned so it chaos. very early though, Brim. I mean, it is easy. Surely you collect the kills. Berlin gets three. That's wild. Get the hell out of here. Dealing with the util single-handedly. I mean, a man was basically alone. And now, how do you clear this one out? Lee saw to the side, lovely peek, off with the dizzy. That is a slam dunk finish. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more about the blue wall. Tell me about the Berlin wall. That's, <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, he just, how, have, how has he managed to pick up three there? <laughs> that protocol of jumping through the one way, I think is a really nice idea. First player jumps through, drags the crosshair is the game plan. Perhaps doesn't quite drag it far enough in that situation because they're swinging almost exactly into Berlin's crosshair. It just worked so well. Bottom of the scoreboard and comes out like that on the pistol. That's what you're saying, Brennan. It only takes that one round. They are being swamped in this position. Lysol like, doesn't know which way to look. Teammate have us in the back. Okay, traded. Three versus three, equalized here. Dash forward to the peak, Ayang. They want to get aggressive and defend these weapons, I think. But Kamikor aren't even going for them. No, not quite. Wall up onto the high ground. Really just props up Thomasy for an easy peek. Spike planted. Easy kill for Aang. Autumn there. Can't quite land the shots there, but the Marshall, but finally a bit of damage done to the body. 100 left, one player left standing. It's Martin. Yes, the plant down, but this is a really difficult situation to try and win. And there it is. Spam damage and the flank attempt there. Very surprised that Carmen Corp played that round so quickly after they got themselves into a 3v3. If they'd slowed things down, I believe there were two Bulldogs lying around for them to be able to try and pick up and use. But they got roped into the pace of that. And then all of the danger just kind of trickled away. See, Aiyang deals with that boost play. 
It's quite a nice idea from Comic Core, but something we've seen a lot from these Sage teams. And you wouldn't have believed it if you only watched the first seven rounds. But seven in a row, straight back for FBX, means the game is tied here on Icebox. Nice oh, set up now onto the bonus round. <laughs> Two players survived in a prior round here for FBX, so there's not too much danger, but guess what? The Avengers are bloody here. I mean, listen, the amount of players they've got trying to play that four position belt, not really accounted for. It's a high low setup. They are really mopping up the rest of these players. An attempt by life, repositions, but just out into the open. It's all being watched for. <laughs> Cheeky idea. I do respect it. I love the idea. But FBX take a gamble, shove four players in, and KC, that discipline that we were seeing from them all throughout EMEA, I think that's the first round where you really see it exemplified here in Icebox. All down to one. Looks almost impossible. Yeah, so so it's just going to be looking to do that. Surely, damage. surely here the streaks are broken. We don't see another seven in a row for KC, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even possible. It's really not. I mean, at that point. You win the map 14-7? Yeah, dusted. Maybe we get them to skirt the rules. We'll do first to 16. <laughs> <laughs> FPX, though, really have shown that they're not willing to just roll over in these kind of games, especially when they're pushed. I mean, they certainly come into this one as the underdogs, but I had a chance to talk to Berlin before, you know, these games kicked off. And I asked him, how much better do you think this version of FPX is compared to last year's? You know, if you were following this team in 2023, okay, they looked all right. They were making it to some of the international events. They've Since then, they've added Life, who's up towards the top of the scoreboard for them here. He's been a big player for them. And Berlin said, Two and a half times better. It's very precise. I don't yeah. know where he quite got that from, but <laughs> he's he's a lot more confident this year than he was in the last, when they were only able to get one map at two global appearances. They've run the numbers. Two and a half times, maybe enough to try and take it against them. That's a cheeky play. Cool idea. All to boost themselves up. Berlin, no. Deals with the trespasser in through mid. And that's, well, there is the follow-up. Ayang. Watching it for any sort of passerby. Only three players now left standing for Carmen Court. Looks like a read to me that they were expecting Berlin to be playing B. You know, both of those controller players for FBX fighting over B. They baited out Lysor there, who swung off the back of a paranoia that was extremely optimistic. They are so damn aggressive, though. Willing to take the risks, aren't they? I mean, yeah. Aeyang has just walked up all the way behind. And all of this in a player advantage situation where you don't need to force fights like this. It's a round winning or losing play, probably, that Aeyang and Life have gone for. Carmen Core are well and truly trapped here. Though I don't believe they know it yet. No indicator. Here. Contacting together. Open to the gunplay, can carry them through a round like this one. Looking behind them, no, not to the side, not expecting a player out towards Yelas Berlin. Still not cleaned up. Spike though, planted. Two players though for them. Flash over the top, Martin. How's he doing this? No man? way. No way to Carmen Core find that. That's outrageous. FBX had them cornered, caged up, no exits. Utility being used from the back as well. And Martin ducks, bobs, weaves, and picks up three. You are joking. How have they done that? I mean, the first pick, lovely. But then this kill before getting the dizzy. And then a jump push into the nice. Stand up, stand up now. Oh. <laughs> All right, a bit of fire with these Carmen Core players in their first time on the Big Masters stage. Getting heated. Stacked though from the FBX players here. Ball has made to refight. What a shot. Still aggression showcased here by Martin. His teammates are going to be there with him. Got his back live. Live? What? <laughs> you see, KC have no idea that that was going to happen. Even a possibility. Yeah. Just no idea at all. They didn't even think of that as a timing that FBX could have chosen for some aggression. You can see how the unexpected nature of how FBX plays can catch teams off guard. But thus far, Martin in the last round and this has managed to bail his team out. Berlin, knives Ooh. out, no gun. Watching for the mid aggression. And Aeyang, they should have some idea, was over towards A earlier on. That dizzy was used. His shooting's been fairly good. 
The most likely outcome here is that he just goes down and gets a thrash online for the next. This game has been so streaky. There's only 30 seconds left. <laughs> 30 seconds left. I don't see how he's able to convert. And KC are going to be able to respond with three in a row after FBX got seven to tie it up. Now, <laughs> would you refer to this one as a back and forth game, Bren? Because technically, it's gone back and then it went <laughs> forth <laughs> and now it's going back again. Yeah, but, yeah. By the, by the technical definition. Yeah, but it really has not been competitive in the, like, round-to-round uh, -round basis. No, no. Very streaky. Very, very streaky. Autumn's going to get an op online and try to peek under two by the look of things. Would anticipate him just getting smoked off by Tamashi very early on, but we'll see. Yeah, he gets an early the pick. pick. Wow, okay. Tomazi, thrash. Thrash. Just to see if they can clear and cleave their way in through B main. Yang. He's open to the window here. Lurk timing could be brutal. Lurk timing could be brutal. Spots the head. Spots the head. Magnum He's racing ahead, man. Doesn't want anything to do with this. Look at him. Looking straight into the floor. Maybe anticipating a re-peak, but no, he's backing it away. In the meantime... Yeah, speaking about re-peaks, Berlin in a player advantage situation again. FPX deciding to try to make the play to win the round. Unnecessary, for sure. And Berlin does get punished for it. Resin Life of Shin is going to play for this one. Portion of the wall broken, but that's <laughs> all good. Yeah, thankfully. All good. Thankfully, Alton wasn't watching that again. That was only 45 seconds left. Walking their way over towards A. Start to get a move on, though. What util do they have to try and clear close? They are, I think, quite scared of the prospect that life could be just in a one and done. Especially when he's playing Rainer. Does he see the head just on the belt there? Looks unlikely. Orb in his face. 30 seconds left. Players approaching rapidly on the position. It's a double face as the orb goes down. Only 20 seconds left here. No real utility as far as I can see for FPX to deny this one. Magnum is Magnum. really far behind and has missed the timing. Yeah, he has, but he's going to be making a call at least for his team here. Over to Bison time. Really wide face by Nare. Claiming it. He's feeling it, man. It's yeah. going around for him. And this time, Kamikoda not messing around. This is another situation where KC lost players early on in the round. They weren't expecting the op to be on that sight line. It is entirely possible for the Viper to throw that mid line up without exposing any part of their body. But Autumn caught Tomashi at the beginning of the round. And Berlin ended up making a mistake when they were up and it just opened the door for Narek to take over. Nare for Kami Court. One of the North American imports over to EMEA has been lighting the world up. He's been looking unbelievably good, but certainly one of those players that we don't know quite how they're going to perform when it gets to the Masters stage. Are the nerves going to be there? And Berlin goes walkabouts again Berlin. in this round. They just they expect it. It's happened so many times now. They were doubled up. I mean, basically a high-low setup. One player crouched in front of the other. Yeah. Just waiting for the aggression. Yeah, and it's very, very similar to what Berlin did in the previous round to lose them that player advantage situation. FBX have got to be careful. They've clearly got what it takes to be able to bring the game to Carmine Corp. But this has given me flashbacks of the finals they played in VCT where they arguably should have beaten EDG and they let so many of those advantages slip through their fingers. Here comes Ayan with the play again. He's got a flash out in his hand, still gets one kill. Maybe setting up Autumn for a bit of success, but no, everybody cleaned up. Carmine Corp. Live and kicking with three of their players. Just going to try and hunt out where is life. Heels up now. Not letting anything slip. Thrash there. Connects. Detained. Humiliation time on the grand stage. As Kyle core up to 12. For our first knife kill of Masters Madrid. Do they really count when you've got the thrash attain on them? I think it, I, it I is think the disrespect. Yeah, I think they shouldn't personally. <laughs> I don't think we should be recording those in the stats, but... Yeah, this is very well dealt with by KC. You can still see some moments where they're not quite anticipating what FBX are going to go for, but for the majority... <laughs> for the majority, they have got this on lock. The anticipation of Berlin's push at the beginning of that round and the way they executed was immaculate. They're looking for that punish again onto Tomaji. It's not there. Not gonna get it. Yeah, this time playing a little safer. 
doubling up with Magnum as well. Casey, one round away, five chances of converting. Keep it clean. It's going to be their aim, tucked to the corner, that's life, avoiding the initial flash cross from the ropes. Accurate enough to win that fight out, but dismiss in towards the back now. Underneath Raft, there's plenty more players ready to try and fight him. Target rich environment, take your pick, take your time, son, because this is you lighting the world on fire. Live with the ace. Holy! And he's on his feet after that one, too. If the KC players are trying to keep him rooted in that seat, they've well and truly failed in round 20. He's dropped 24 kills. I mean, he's the only player that's actually able to evade the way that KC are playing, because he can get one, get out, and pick the most awkward timings through all of their utility. Springs out of his seat. Almost, knock <laughs> <laughs> Almost knocking it off the stage. He's feeling it. Definitely feeling it. Back into the fight. Back Here. into the action. Carmen Core, slow and steady. It's their approach to begin. They know how aggressively FPX are liking to play, and they do have both the duelist players. Dash still available. Dismiss there if life gets a kill. Of exit strategies, but here we look at this. I mean, they're just holding four, and still life claims it. He's on fire, barely a shred of Narei poking out, still manages to catch the headshot. Magnum's one away from having a massive ultimate, and they're sneaking around Over underneath them. Life goes for the reclear, it's a dizzy, still, it's traded. Magnum is there, on for the two there. Hang on, drops down, Dash is there. Martins finds it forwards now. After the lockdown, it's 2v2. This could be it to seal the map. What is going to be the answer from FPX? Walking out, holding, walking out, hoping that they can punish, but no. Just granted the kill. And Berlin, the IGL, it's a 1v2. Cover going out. All on the line to keep his team in the map. Paranoia available. Smokes still there, wants to walk though, doubled up, they're dominating the position if he chooses to just peek ever so slightly into it. There's going to be a shorty ready and waiting. More smoke used. Tap, force them out into the open. No easy fights, no easy exits. That is Carmen Core sealing it up. Nice and pretty for map number one, 13-8. A bizarre opening to Masters Madrid. But it had some great moments. FBX, seven out of eight of their rounds taken in a streak. Yeah, absolutely. Was going to set it to a short break on the other side of things, of course. The continuation of the series don't go anywhere.